Let me see. I got out of rehab at the end of 2019. And by the grace of God, I've pretty much been sober since then. I still had some drinks in 2020. I was going through a divorce. I had just gotten all six of my kids back, plus two of their little friends. I was the only one that was feeding seven, all eight of us, and a cat, only one working. And it was just, it was a lot of pressure. I was going through a lot. And I had just started my record label, Masters of Fate Music. So it was a very stressful time. <sighs> A few more things that I do to make sure that I stay sober. For the first part is I let my guilt <laughs> weigh so heavy on my heart that it does not allow me the space to even consider relapsing. I've just, it's not something that's on my radar. Honestly, so many of my friends have died. I, I, there's so many broken families, so many broken people. And I've just learned so many more coping skills since I started being an addict and stopped being an addict, honestly. I've done the work i do the work every single day to deal with the deeper issues that i was trying to cover up with my drug use one i use drugs to try to fit in socially because i had such bad social anxiety which i did not even know i was just recently diagnosed with an avoidant personality disorder and i've also been diagnosed with bipolar 2. i've had that diagnosis for years though the bipolar but Back when I was coming up, I didn't know that I had social anxiety, so I would drink or smoke weed so that I could be around other people. You know how people use antidepressants when they're sad or anxious? I would use weed and alcohol for that. Um, like, like I said, if I had to go in a social situation, I would always be nervous, I would always be anxious, and drinking and smoking took the edge off. But unfortunately, something else it did was it made me go deeper inside of myself like I could be around other people but I still felt very much alone and inside of my head so it kind of stopped me connecting to people on a deeper level it kind of make me it made me antisocial, even if I was in a room full of people which is ironic considering why I started using it to begin with so I had to make sure that I always remember, and I don't have to try to remember about how bad it was when I was on drugs. I have so many repressed memories and suppressed memories that will just pop up all throughout the day. All throughout the day. That's part of the reason why I stopped driving. My anxiety got so bad and those memories would just pop up intrusive thoughts and I would just get trapped in my trauma. And anybody trying to do that at 70 miles an hour, okay? So I had to let that go. And as you know, unless you're new here, and if you are welcome, Thank you for being here. I love you. I have also cut off all of my relationships outside of my children. I left my job. I don't socialize. And a lot of it has to do with my anxiety, but also a lot of it has to do with me dealing with my trauma. I'm no good to anyone else if I'm no good to myself. And I need to protect myself as well as others because I need to be in a very structured environment and able, to, and able to keep my sanity, honestly. Everything is a trigger. Everything is too bright or too loud or too messy or just too much. So, you know, I feel like my body is still 10, 15 years ago with the things that have happened to me. Now, logically, I understand, but my body is still trapped in trauma and I have to release that I have to let these things go I have to work through these things and it takes time something else I do to stay sober is that I'm always busy I'm never bored I'm always working either I'm making music or I'm making a painting or I'm shooting a video or I'm writing or I'm journaling or I'm working out or I'm hanging out with the kids or I'm cooking or I'm planting or it's just I, it, I'm always have something to do and Another thing I do is I'm always in a constant state of prayer. I always keep spirit close to me. God is not someone I visit on Sundays. Like spirit, God, nature, ancestors, these are all the same things to me. And I always keep them near me. I keep them near me to remind me of where I am, what I'm supposed to be doing, and my potential. So I never feel away or unembraced by God or the universe. I feel like I'm always being watched and always being held accountable. I no longer feel alone because I had to deepen my relationship spiritually with the universe, with myself, with nature, so that I always felt supported and I never felt alone. Even if I'm in a room, locked in a room, a dark room with nothing in it, I can still entertain myself because I have a brain and I can still feel safe and supported because 
I have the energies of the universe that belong to me because I belong to it. I don't have to walk around fearful. I spent so much of my life full of fear. And I thought that the drugs would make it better, but really it just made me more paranoid and suspicious of everyone. And in some spiritual ways, it, it, it made it worse because I could see their true nature because the veil was disintegrated when you take certain drugs. You don't see the human suit that these things are wearing because not everything that looks human is human. So if you are spiritually inclined or have a spiritual gift, some drugs, some synthetic drugs will just make your perception even stronger. And I feel like sometimes we don't see things as they are in their true state because we would freak out, honestly. And not even, it's like after a while you can get used to anything, but nobody wants to be going to the store and just, hey, there's a demon. It's like, well, well, I'm just trying to get some ice cream. So I always feel like my entire bloodline that has passed over is watching me, is helping me, guiding me, but they're also holding me accountable. And there's some things that you just don't do. You don't litter, you don't abuse children, you don't disrespect God. You just, there's some things you don't do. And so I have to hold myself accountable at all times for the decisions that I make, how I treat my body, how I treat my kids, and how I connect with spirit. It's very, very important. Another way that I stay sober is that I stay healthy. Working out my body, accepting my body, doing a little bit of mirror work, i.e. standing in front of the mirror butt ass naked, looking at my flaws and accepting them and saying, hey Fupa, hey, I see you're there. Thanks for helping me stretch my body out to carry my six kids, but you're leaving and I appreciate you, but you have to go. And loving myself as I am and not trying to hide my flaws or cover it up or act like they're not there. Really staring at them and, and just accepting myself as I am and understanding that later on down the line, I'm gonna have a different version of myself. This version of me will be a distant memory, so I don't need to get caught up in my flaws. If there's something that is fixable, I will fix it. If not, I'm just going to learn to live with it, and that's what it is. At least I have a body that works. I'm grateful. I've accepted my body, and I have started building it to be very strong, purposefully eating at specific times, specific foods, because of their nutritional value and how I can benefit from it. My hair, my skin, my attitude, understanding that a lot of diseases of the mind can happen because you don't have the proper nutrients in your body it's all about balance right it's all about energy so if you don't have enough energy because the food that you're eating is dead then what do you think your attitude is going to be like so those are some of the things that i do to stay sober in some ways i live in the past present and the future all at the same time i'm always remembering the person that I was and comparing it to who I am now, forgiving the past version of myself and keeping the current version of me accountable. Like, whoa, whoa, we don't wanna go backwards and be her again, right? And looking towards the future and using that version of myself to encourage this version of myself. So I'm living in the past, present, and future all at the same time. And doing that ironically helps me stay present and it helps me be grateful for where I am. I'll never be as low as I used to be, and there's only going up from here, so I really need to appreciate where I'm at because I'll never be here again. Even though where I'm at is not where I want to be, I'm going to be where I want to be one day. Let's enjoy where we are now, you know? It's like knowing you have a seven-course meal and being on the second course and being like, oh, I can't wait for dessert. Girl, you know you're getting dessert. Just enjoy the second course. And this is what I tell myself. And that's something else I do. I talk to myself a lot. I check in with myself to see how I feel. I feel like that's something we learned in rehab a little bit. When if you have an urge to use a drug or to drink, ask yourself, are you hungry? Are you bored? Are you irritated? So I do that now. I do that with everything. If I start to feel irritated, I say, okay, are you tired? Do you need to go outside? Like I treat, it's like, Maybe I'm talking to my inner child because I really talk to myself like this. <laughs> Are you hungry, Fury? Do you need a nap? Like, girl, get it together. Thank you so much for spending time with me here in Fury World. If you're interested in checking out my music, it's available under my artist name, The Fury of Abyss, on all music streaming platforms worldwide. I love you. Are you a recovering addict? How are you doing in your recovery? Did you get any aftercare? Did you have to cut off everyone you've ever known when you got out of recovery? Did you have support when you got out of rehab? Let me know down in the comments. I love you and I'll check you in the next episode. Peace.